Tuesday. Uh, I've had two good practices, uh, both Monday and Tuesday. Today we've worked primarily on working on a little first and second down game plan versus UNLV, as well as continuing com competition at uh, several positions. We'll go through this week, uh, go through this week, play our mock game on Saturday, uh, sit down and discuss personnel on Sunday, and then make some decisions uh, moving forward for our team as we uh, get ready for UNLV. But it's good to start working uh, to break camp and now start working towards the first opponent. Um, as far as a health standpoint, you saw both tight ends, Tyler Petit and uh, um, Eric Cromenhoek back, which was uh, which was great. Austin Jackson got significant work over the last two days. Hoping to get Chuma back uh, tomorrow uh, for a little work, and um, Clayton John, uh, Clayton Bradley, uh, hopefully uh, either later in the week or first of next week. Um, we actually got Jake Lichtenstein back for nine periods a day, which was also good. Uh, with that, I'll uh, answer any questions that you got, Coach. Um, in, in terms of your mentality going into this week, mm -hmm. are you treating this uh, mock scrimmage the same way that you would simulate um, your regular season schedule in terms of what you're emphasizing on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, what we do with the mock scrimmage is we try to make it as real a, a game like as we can. You know, we actually um, uh, use headsets, communication, substitutions. Um, we're changing personnel groupings to make sure all skill know exactly where they're going. Um, we're putting um, situations on the quarterbacks uh, so they get guys lined up the correct way. All the things that happen in games that just basically make you mad as a coach, um, addressing it, special situations. And then we put the ball down and play a little bit. Um, and uh, it just helps me in that last phase, you know, in a real kind of game-like situation uh, to be able to see, all right, who's ready and, and who may need a little bit more time to develop. What would be the deciding factors over the next week at the quarterback position? Um, you know, over the next week, I, I'm, I'm, I visited with each one of the kids yesterday, just like I did after each preseason game, and we sat down. And each one has something different to work on. Uh, I addressed, I addressed uh, the overall what we're looking for from the intangibles, decision making, timing, accuracy, watching the ball move, um, and, and each has a different phase that uh, they were really strong in last week, and then uh, they've got some things that I want to see them progress in this week. Um, I wanted to continue the process because I want the guys to continue to compete. They all need to progress, and uh, uh, I want to make sure I'm right too. Uh, you know, so um, another week does not hurt uh, to be able to put us in that situation. Um, we're getting plenty enough work uh, with all three, which is good, and uh, I think it makes all three of them better players if called upon in the season. What is something that you want to see from JT this week? Um, I talked to JT uh, about. Uh, I thought his decision making in the scrimmage was really good. He went to the he went to the correct place um, each and every time. Uh, he also got the ball out on time. Uh, he missed a couple throws, and so I said, "Hey, you know, I really want this week to be about being precise, aim small, miss small, be accurate." Um, and you know, he's been a deadly accurate quarterback. And you know, when you get in those live game situations and bullets, uh, I want to see that accuracy. And um, uh, but overall, I thought he had a nice scrimmage. I really, really did. Uh, I'm just I'm harder on quarterbacks than anybody else. And, yeah. uh, he had he had some great strengths, and that's his area of growth this week. He's done a nice job the first two days. Coach Ellis said on the two interceptions there, JT had it in the right place. Just mm -hmm. was a little late. How did how did you? Look? I, I, I'll look at I'll look at the tape. Um, he, you know the the. The one sprint, he got baited by the corner. I thought, oh, gee, Elijah Griffin did an unbelievable job. <laughs> he, he, he he made him, uh, he fooled him on that one. He, he came up and acted like he was taking the flat and bailed right at the last second and got up underneath it, which was a very savvy player play for a young person. So he got baited on the corner route. Um, I'll have to check the other one. I think the flat zone defender buzzed out there and uh, just thought it, it was an incorrect read, uh, but I'll have to check on tape. Would it be safe to say that you'll announce the quarterback decision after the mock game? I'm going to say it's probably going to be early in the week, uh, as, as early Before as I can. Or after uh, you know, oh, it's definitely going to be after. Okay. It's, it's definitely going to be after the mock game. I want to go through this week, go through, uh, go through the process, and then, you know, I, I personally, you know, out of respect to the players and their parents, I like sitting the, the kids down, visiting with them, um, being able to call their parents, uh, and. Uh, um, and being able to do it the right way um, and um, in a private setting, you know. And uh, I just think that's out of the art of respect and honor to 
three guys that have really competed, uh, you owe that to them. So um, I'll, I'll be doing that uh, after the mock game at some point. Coach, you announced the captains yesterday. What makes those four guys? Oh, team? man. Uh, I tell you what, the, the beauty about being a captain here is it's the vote of your teammates. And uh, it's not our vote as coaches. It's the vote of 110 men naming the guys that did a tremendous job in the off season. And, um, you know, to be able to have Cam, Porter, Marvell, and Toa uh, represent this team, man, I can't think of uh, any better. It, it was, it was, it was really cool because there were some guys right up underneath them. There's so senior leadership on this group. There were some guys that were right underneath them in the vote also. Um, but uh, those four are representative of what we are on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I think about how consistent they are on and off the field of representing the Trojan family. What are you most concerned about? two weeks left until we start the season? Um, I think just um, I addressed one of them today was just uh, I, I actually stopped practice and reminded everybody that uh, how important communication and substitution is. Uh, I went back and watched about every practice and, and both scrimmages and just the art of being able to get in and out and say, hey, I got you or we're in three wides, or we're in 12 personnel, or 22 personnel, and that communication that happens. There was a couple times defensively today that people were asking for calls, and those are the things that when you're in a game situation with, you know, 70, 80, 90,000 around you, you know, you have to be all be on the same page, and you gotta be loud, and you gotta be communicative. So that's probably the biggest thing, is making sure that we're game ready. Uh, practice is nice and easy because we can yell at them as coaches. Uh, but today, it's like I put them all off the field and made them do it, and I'll, I'll make them do it up into the next two weeks, so it feels like game like. I think for the physicality, you expect to see all through the season during game weeks. Uh, I, I hope so. I, I was really proud. I had some. Uh, some people come up to me that were here last year and said, man, coach, this is such a competitive physical atmosphere. They, they play fast. Um, and, you know, I think the sense of competition, not naming it too deep right now, and, and there's some jobs that are, that are out there that, um, that guys are competing for. And I, and I told the guys in there, this is a two-fold week. This is a, a week where we're starting to introduce the concepts that we're going to run versus UNLV. But it's also a decision-making week for us uh, as far as your role going into week one and, uh, and defining that role for week one. So I thought the kids took it to heart. Uh, I thought they competed on both sides of the ball. How do you keep that competing going once um, you've got the two deep yeah, set and all that? How I, I, I think each week's like a playoff game week, and, and the guy that's playing the best goes out there. And uh, these guys have got a lot of pride, too. You know, offense and defensively, they go against each other, and that's part of what we do. You know, we, I, I'm not a big, huge fan of service teams. Um, I, I really like live speed. Uh, I really want Saturdays to be easy for them. And when they're going against each other, it becomes a whole lot easier sometimes than always having service teams. That's why you see us go against each other. Um, a lot during practice rather than saying, okay, you get over here, you get over here, here's the, here's the service squad. So I'm going to try to keep it as much as us going against each other as I can. Has Elijah Beer Tucker 